There it is. <clears throat> so, um, we're in Daniel again. We're going to be in chapter 3 today. But just some review. Uh, you guys can, I'm going to ask some review questions. Yesterday, what did we even talk about yesterday? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Great, you can go get some. It's in the blue bag there. Um, what we, we talked about the dream. We, there was this weird statue. Uh, what kind of elements were the statue? Does anyone remember that? I saw his hand first. And we'll get back. Go for it. Um, so there was a head of gold, uh -huh. and then there was silver, mm -hmm. iron, and clay mixed Yeah, yeah, go. Go for it. Great. And um, we talked about, like, what, what's the thing that broke the statue? Does anyone remember that? Go ahead. Big rock. What was what? I'll ask that second. Grade. Yeah, yeah. Go for it. Um, and then this this rock. What what is the rock? What do we know the rock to be? All right. Uh, you guys, that whole table. You guys did the verse and stuff. I'm gonna give some other people a chance to get some candy. I'm sorry. Did you get some? All right. Go for it. Yeah, Jesus, the kingdom of God. Uh, one last question. I see some hands all the way in the back, so I'm definitely going to go to you guys. All right, so um, does anyone remember the big idea we talked about yesterday? Like we, we talked about like one, one center idea. Yeah, go for it. What was that? Yeah, you, I'll give that to you. Go for it. You can, you can go get some. Um, courage in God, that's what we're talking about. Um, but we also talked about a, a, a central idea of having confidence in God who has no rival. Having confidence in God who has no rival. And so that's what we talked about yesterday. Great job, guys. And today we're going to be talking about <clears throat> chapter 3, Chocolate Bunnies, the Fiery Furnace. And um, the big idea is listen and obey God's voice no matter the consequences. Listen and obey to God's voice, no matter the consequence. And so, chapter 3, we're in chapter 3, like I said. I'm in mock speed going through these things. So, I'm going to start reading uh, at verse 1 to verse 8, and then we're going to jump to verse 12, and then we're going to jump to verse 16, just for the sake of time. I can't read the whole chapter, so I'm going to read parts of it that give us the big picture. So verse 1, King Nebuchadnezzar made an image of gold whose height was 60 cubits and its breadth 6 cubits. He set up in the plain of Dura, that's uh, Shinron, the place of uh, the province of Babylon. Um, the king Nebuchadnezzar sent to gather the sat sat satraps, the uh, prefects, the governors, the counselors, the treasurers, the justices, the magistrates, and all the officials of the provinces to come to <clears throat> the dedication of the image that King Nebuchadnezzar had set up. Then the satraps, the uh, prefects, the governors, the counselors, the treasurers, the just, uh, justices, the magistrates, and all the officials of the provinces gathered for the dedication of the image the king had set up. And they stood before the image that Nebuchadnezzar had set up. And the herald proclaimed aloud, You are commanded, O people of nations and languages, that when you hear the sound of the horn, pipe, lyre, trigon, harp, bagpipe, and every kind of music, you are to fall down and worship the golden image that King Nebuchadnezzar has set up. And whoever does not fall down and worship shall immediately be cast into the burning, fiery furnace. Therefore, as soon as all the peoples heard the sound of the horn, pipe, lyre, trigon, harp, bagpipe, and every kind of music, all the peoples, nations, and languages fell down and worshipped the golden image that, king never, that the king had set up. Therefore, at the time, certain Chaldeans came forward and maliciously accused the Jews. Jumping to verse 12. <clears throat> there are certain Jews whom you have appointed over the affairs of the province of Babylon. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These men, O king, pay no attention to you. They do not serve your gods or worship the golden image that you have set up. And guys, this is where things get spicy. All right? Things get real spicy. The king, I mean, he gets ticked off. He's angry. He's like, oh, you got to be kidding me right now. 
He was like, I'm the best. There's no one better than me. Why aren't these guys worshiping this chocolate bunny thing that I made? This is the best thing. This is the best thing since sliced bread. I don't even know if they had sliced bread then, but <clears throat> he goes to them, verse 16 now. <clears throat> Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego uh, answered and said to the king, O Nebuchadnezzar, we have no need to answer you in this matter. If this be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning fiery furnace, and he will deliver us out of your hand. But if not, be it known to you, O king, that we will not serve your gods or worship the golden image that you have set up. That is a powerful statement from those guys. And so <clears throat> this morning, I have, a, I have a hard question. I don't want you guys to answer it, but it's this. If push comes to shove, when everything is about to be taken from you, where will your hope be? Where will your trust be? What is the thing that you will worship? What is the thing that you will be obedient to? You see, like I said, you don't have to answer that, but I, that's a question. Think about it. it. It's a challenging one. It's one that I, I think about as, um, like I said, the reason why I, we're going through this is uh, Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they started at your age. They were prophets. They were, they were trained in, in the law. They, they knew uh, everything about Yahweh, the Lord. And they, they've been studying um, Moses' words, the Torah. And so they're, they're at this point, and they were your age, and now we're about, I don't know, nine to ten years after chapter two. And they're confronted with this. And so I told you guys yesterday <clears throat> that the world will push you to serve other gods. Whatever those gods may be, they will, it, it, the world will push you to do so. And none of them are the one true God that we worship, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. <clears throat> so we're in this story now. Like I said, we're about nine to ten years after the king's dream in chapter two. And... The story of Daniel gets shifted a little bit to Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And so we left off in chapter 2 with the king recognizing the power and might and the greatness of God. And we read that in verse, uh, chapter 2, verse 47. Truly, your God is the God of gods, the Lord of kings, and the reveal of all mysteries. You have been able to reveal this mystery even to me. And so we are still in Babylon. But it seems like the king is forgotten. It seems like he's totally like uh, spaced out and he doesn't remember what, has ha what happened just nine, ten years ago. And so the, the scary statue that exploded in his dream, he has no, he, it's not even on his mind anymore. He decides to make a giant gold statue. It's ironic, really. And so this statue is 90 feet tall and he demands that all people bow down and worship this statue anytime they hear music. I mean, this would be obnoxious. I mean, when you guys are in rehearsal, right, with, with your teachers, you play a note, you got to stop, and then you bow down and pray and worship this thing. And then you get up, you play the next note, you bow down and then you worship the thing again. And then you play the next note and you bow down and worship and then you play. Th this is how this would go. Like... It's crazy. That would be obnoxious for tuba players, I feel like. Or like cellists. I'm like, oh my gosh, I gotta put this thing down, put, strap this thing on. And, you know, there, yesterday I saw someone, uh, she like verbally grunted because they had, she had her cello and she had to walk down steps. I was like, I under, I, I, that looks obnoxious. <laughs> but seriously, th this would be crazy. Now, if you even remember just two days ago, what, does anyone remember what significant Bible story happened in the same land of Babylon. Does anyone remember? Tower of Babel. You can get some. The Tower of Babel. This is exactly right. You know, he's building a giant bunny chocolate statue thing in the middle of where they had the Tower of Babel that had already been blown up by God. And he was like, you know what's a great idea? 
a statue like the same size of that thing. Like that's what he says. And so I want to show you guys something. When we're talking about this reality in, in the Old Testament, uh, often Babylon is kind of um, pitted against Jerusalem, often. I mean, like the whole time, they're, they're always fighting. And so Babylon is often seen as man's pride and fighting against God's will and fighting against God. And Jerusalem is also often seen as God's power and sovereignty and authority over all things and his rule and his power. And so just like the people who built the tower, King Nebuchadnezzar wants to make his name great, just like the people who, wanted, who built the tower wanted to make their name great. So to deny the statue and to deny worshiping it is to deny the king. I mean, this is high treason. That's why we read this. Whoever does not fall down and worship shall immediately be cast into the fiery furnace. And it's strange. You think, why is there a furnace always on? Well, this was a real thing. People had already been thrown into this furnace before. And we're going to describe what this furnace looks like very shortly. But for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, this was an actual life or death situation. They were going to be burned alive. And so everybody else who bowed the knee, they were like, I like not being burned alive. I like to not feel like a chicken wing in the middle of the outside right now. I mean, just think, it's hot outside, right? You guys are like, oh, I got to walk to the next building. I'm so, man, I mean, you feel like you're swimming through the air. At least I felt like that. And just think, that, you know, like a bajillion times hotter than it is outside. And so, I know. <laughs> now, some of you may be thinking, well, this isn't a big deal. Like, um, we don't really worship golden statues today. Or, but I, I want to challenge us. That may be true that we don't worship golden statues today. But we worship other things. We worship things that take our affections. Things like money. Things like identity, entertainment, video games, Fortnite, perfection, good grades, popularity, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, comfort, music, actors, actresses, sports, po politics, being a Republican, being a Democrat, our bodies, PlayStations, Xboxes, and our phones. Those are just some. PUBG, yeah. Guys, every one of these things is a false god with false promises. There's a slight difference in our idols than the golden statue, though. We're not being forced to, and we're not being threatened that we're going to be killed. We worship those things because we love them. We love them. And if I'm honest with myself, I often find my heart is trying to work the one true God, our God of the Bible, around my own personal idols. This is what we do often. We do it so often, we, we really don't want to admit it, that would challenge us. And we often do things for the things, I mean, we often like do anything for the things we love the most. And so now, <clears throat> just some quick application for us. We deal with these things as Christians by praying. Yesterday we talked about having confidence in God who has no rival. That means we can go to God with anything that we need. Anything, all things that we need, we go to God. He's the giver of all those things. And so now back into this story. All people bowed the knee except for three men. We know a few things before this moment. We know that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had been promoted to a high level because of their knowledge and their wisdom and their rapport with the king. And we also know that when the music hit, they didn't bow the knee. And we also know that other wise men took notice of them, maybe out of jealousy. And said to the king, verse 12, Oh, these men, O king, pay no attention to you. They do not serve your God or worship the golden image that you have set up. Now, of course, the king was angry-fied, right? He confronts the Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He says, do these people tell the truth? Are you serious right now? He says, if you're ready, stay here. When the music starts, bow the knee and you live. If you don't, you die. Now, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had a choice. They could bow the knee to the statue, or do, the, or do they worship God in their, in their obedience by not bowing down? Now, what they could have done was, you know, we don't really mean to worship the statue. Let's just do it. I like to not be burned alive like a chicken wing outside. 
Or we could do that. We could just not bow and deal with the consequences. And this is what they say. I think it's crazy. I, I think this is wild. Oh, Nebuchadnezzar, we don't owe you anything. Like, I mean, this is the king of, of the greatest empire of all the land. These three guys say, like, like, that's exactly like, we, don't, we, we owe you no answer. We, you, you have nothing for us. If God is for us, who can be against us? And in fact, if we do not bow the knee and we still die, we still won't worship your God. Simple as that. That is what happens here. They draw the line again. They drew the line with the food in uh, chapter 1. They draw the line. We're not worshiping the chocolate bunny man. Sorry. Why would, the, why would they even say this to the king's face? Well, they knew their Bibles. You read in Exodus 20, to four, uh, verses 4 and 5, there's no graven image before me. You're not to have anything. You're not to worship any idol at all. Zero idols before God. Don't worship anything. Don't worship Facebook, TikTok, Instagram, PUBG, Fortnite, whatever it is, clothing, identity, popularity, all those things come no comparison to how great God is. That is what they are saying. Now, y'all, they, they decide to just do this because God tells them not to bow the knee. It's simple for them. They said, we're going to obey God, and if we die for it, so what? So what? Friends, they were fully expecting that they would be punished for this by the king. And they listened and obeyed God's voice no matter the consequence. This is the message here. This is what I want to press into you guys right now. They had no idea if they would be saved, but they still obeyed the word of the Lord. So when faced with trials and temptations on many sides, our faith shows in action through our obedience. Friends, you are going to be tempted in many ways, and I'm going to bring it down to a middle school level. Popularity, right? You will be tempted to deny the things that you have been taught because it wouldn't look good for you. You will most definitely lose friends, popularity, and the world will not like you. But your faith is a living one that plays out as you listen and obey God's voice no matter the consequence. We are called to obey that. As we see Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, our response should be similar to their response. God said it, so I'm going to do it. So now we look at the furnace, right? And these were made, these, these furnaces were kind of like tunnels. If you've ever been in a train tunnel or you drive through a tunnel, it's kind of like that with one end closed off and only one end opened. And so you kind of like walk in and these things were 1800 degrees, except this time it's going to be seven times hotter because the king is seven times more ticked off with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Seven times hotter than 1,800 degrees. And so it was so hot that the men who tied up Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego and brought them into the furnace died themselves by burning alive. And so we're at this event. We're at this, at the end of this story, the fiery furnace. They're, they're thrown in. These, the, the soldiers die. The mightiest soldiers in, in all of Babylon die from the fiery furnace. They're thrown in, and the king, he's talking to his stewards and people, and he's like, yeah, this is going to get them. And then, it's, you know, Nebuchadnezzar's celebrating, their, and the guy's like, bro, there's four guys in there. He's like, what? Four? What are you talking about? We only had three guys in there. Daniel's still good. He's out. And he looks. He's like, what is that? There's four. The angel of the Lord came, protected them, protected them so much that in the furnace, although everybody was scorched alive besides those three, they didn't even smell like fire. They walk back out and the king says, oh, Lord, my Lord. Kind of like Psalm 8, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You are the only God that could have done this. You saved your people. 
Does this sound familiar? They were in the fires and the angel of the Lord protected them just like Jesus protected us from the fires of hell. Campers, this sounds familiar because it's our rescue. Who would save these men from certain death? God. Just like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were rescued from the fires of certain death, we were rescued by another who would gladly take the fires of God's judgment to save us from certain death. You see, Jesus took us from that fiery furnace by dying on the cross. This is the gospel, and this is the reality for us, friends. This should spur us on to create the lines that we won't cross. Some, someone literally died for you. Literally died. This is, uh, this is not hyperbole. Someone died. But likewise, even though we know that God could deliver us from our temptations and, and uh, trials, sometimes He doesn't. Sometimes He lets you go through them to press you and refine you. But He does that so that your faith would grow. And again, so that we, like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, would listen to and obey God's voice despite the circumstances. Let's pray. Father, we just come before you and we thank you for the gift of your son. We thank you that we are here, that, that um, we can just use our gifts to glorify you through music. We pray that you help us grow our faith, that you would help us understand what it means, what it means for us, this story means for us, to listen and obey God's voice no matter, no matter the consequences. We thank you and praise you in your name. Amen.